Hi everyone and welcome to this video. So today we're going to be looking at how to attach a Lambda functions to our agents that we create in Bedrock. So let's get started and uh, so let's first begin with creating a new agent. So I'll just go ahead to the Amazon Bedrock service and click on the create agent here. And so for this agent, let's just call it uh, date time calculator, date time calci. Okay. And let's just click on the create button. So what our agent is going to do is that we're going to enable it to uh, calculate the date and time dynamically. As you're aware, LLMs by themselves do not have this functionality because they are trained on pre-existing data. They won't be able to make any kind of these dynamic calculations by themselves. So in order to get over this limitations, we're going to create a Lambda function which has the capabilities to just, you know, get the current date time. And this uh, agent will invoke that Lambda function via this action group, and it will be able to give the response, okay? So first let's select our model and let's just go ahead with the Amazon's Anova Pro model, okay? And for the instructions, uh, I have prepared one instruction sheet, which I'll just copy here. I'll just explain the instructions as well. Uh, so I've just mentioned that uh, you are a date time calculator agent and I've mentioned that uh, you know that I will attach a function to which will return the current date time. You will respond to the user with the result sent by the function. I've asked it to not hallucinate and make up any date time by itself and to only return what is calculated by the function. Okay, it's a simple instruction. I'm just asking it to uh, just use whatever date time is being returned by our Lambda function and nothing else. All right. Great. So now we have saved it. Let me just go over to action groups. Okay. So this is where we can add our Lambda functions. All right. Let me click on add here. And for the action group name, I'll just, uh, you know, I can call it something like uh, date time calci group. Okay. I'll just leave the description empty for now. And here we can, we have two ways to add our action group types. One is by the function details. So we can, you know, define the function name, the parameters, what type of parameters basically are required to invoke the function. So that is the first option. Second option is via API schemas. So if we have an API gateway, or even if we want to invoke a Lambda function using an API schema, right? So then we can use this one. So for API schemas, we, we can upload it either like directly or use the S3 bucket, or we can, you know, use that open API schema to, to mention that, okay, you can use this function with all of these different parameters. So that is what this is. Right now, let's go ahead with the first option. We'll go ahead with the define with function details option. Under the action group invocation, uh, here, let's just click on quick create a new Lambda function because this will create our boilerplate a template uh, with the Lambda function with the necessary permissions required as well. Okay. And for our action group for function one, so for a function, I'll just call it the current date time agent because this is going to ca calculate the current date time. All right. For now, let's just click on the create button. Okay, great. So our uh, action group has been successfully created and enabled. Let me just go inside it, okay? And if I go inside, I can see the, the the name of the Lambda function has created for us. So it's called current date time calci group, okay? So let me go ahead and open up a Lambda function service. I'm just typing in Lambda in the search box and opening it in a new tab. And under that, okay, this is our current, uh, sorry, you know, this one. Uh, so this is the current uh, function that has been created for us. Let me open it up and under the code tab, we'll see the code that has been added. So by default, uh, AWS gives us a boilerplate, a template on how the request will be. So, you know, how that event will look like, how we need to respond as well. Okay, let me just quickly explain this here. Uh, so I've opened up this like documentation in a new tab. Okay, and uh, so essentially they have a set of rules uh, on how our request will look like. So this is basically how the request that comes to our Lambda function, you know, from our agent. So whenever our agent makes a call to our Lambda function, this is how the in, uh, the request to our Lambda function will look like. It'll have the input text, session ID, the API path, HTTP methods, and all of these values will be there. So that if we want to play with these values, manipulate them and do some actions in the backend, we can do it from this. 
Similarly, uh, if uh, we have to send back a response back to the bedrock agent in a way that it can understand. So this is the type of format we have to format our, uh, you know, our, our response in so that uh, our uh, bedrock agents will be able to understand them. So this is basically the, uh, the format. And this is the same format that they have mentioned uh, in, our, in our code as well. So if you, if you check in our code under the Lambda handler function, uh, so they're fetching the action groups, the function names, the message, version, parameters, all of that from the event uh, dictionary itself. So we have, as you're aware, whenever we have a Lambda function, we have two parameters that are passed in the event and the context. And the event will be of a type dictionary. And so from that event dictionary, we are fetching all of these values. And how we have to format the response body will, will look like this. So we have to mention that it's of type text format and under the body key we will mention like whatever the response is and this is how the final response will look like so this is what's being re returned back from our lambda function into our agent okay so now we have to modify our function to enable it to use you know to calculate the current date time so i'll just mention from date time we can import the date time module okay and uh, so before here, let me just calculate the date time. So I'll just mention now is equal to date time dot now. So this is a function that will return us the, our current date time. And so I'll just use this. I'll also mention along with the function was called successfully with parameters. Instead of this content, let me just mention that the current date time is now so i'll just mention our variable okay so this is what's going to be returned by our lambda function it'll it'll calculate the current date time and it'll return it in the body so let me just click on the deploy button and uh, it's currently updating the function and before we move ahead i'll also show you what are the permissions that's updated so if you go to the permissions tab under configuration and you you can click on this role name Okay, and this will open up the IAM service with our role. And under the permission policies, you'll see that this is the policy that's been attached to our Lambda function. Uh, okay, so this will, uh, right now they have just given the basic permissions on creating the log group and allowing it to uh, create the log stream and put the log events. All right, let's go back to our agents now. Um, now that we have, you know, configured our Lambda function with the code, Let's go back to our agent details. I'll just click on our uh, agent builder, go back to our agent builder. Okay, so we have added the instructions. Let me click on save so that we can prepare the agent once. Okay, so now we, let's just try to ask it what is the current date time? What is the current date time? And right now you're seeing that it's able to give us what the current date time is. So this is being dynamically calculated. Right now you can see this is the current date time exactly, uh, you know, this is calculated from our Lambda function. Okay, so let me show you uh, guys like one more um, important concept, is how we can pass parameters into our Lambda function, okay? So first I'm going to open up our uh, particular action group here. Uh, so I'll open up the, uh, the the current date time calculation group. And if we scroll down to our function, you'll see right now we don't have any parameters mentioned. Okay, so let's just add a function, uh, you know, so, sorry, a parameter to our function. So I'll call this uh, parameter username. Okay. And for the description, I'm going to say that this is the name entered by the user in the chat. Okay, so I'm going to be specifically mentioning that the that the user will be mentioning a name in the chat and that is what this parameter is. For the required, I'll mention that this is true so that our agent will be able to ask the user for this particular, you know, parameter. And I'll just click on a check mark to make sure that it's a required parameter here. And uh, for the action status, I'm now going to like enable this, okay? So when we enable this action status, this agent will ask us before it invokes any functions. Previously, when we had seen it directly called our 
function uh, you know uh, but when we enable this we'll also see we'll be able to see what parameters it's passing to the functions as well so let me click on save and exit and okay so now that we have saved it let me save this so that we can prepare our agent okay it's preparing the agent with our latest changes now let me copy paste our uh, prompt so i'm asking it what is the current date time let me execute this and so now you'll see that it's saying that i need to ask the user for the name to proceed so let me just give my name here lennox and let me click on run and now you know since we had that confirm option enabled it's asking us that do we need do we want to run this action group so it, it uh, with the you know our current date time agent it's going to pass in this parameter username with lennox so now i'll just click on confirm to allow it and great now you will see that it returned back our uh, date time and uh, if we go to our lambda function let me go to monitor tab and we'll see how our parameters are being passed in here okay so before we can check the logs we just need to make one modification in the code let me add it uh, along with the body here uh, the name or or we can even just add it in the logs right so let's just add a log so that we know that uh, what our request is coming in as or what our event our parameters that's being passed in so underneath the parameters let me just mention that parameters and pass in our parameters variable let me deploy this and once this is deployed i'll just execute it with the same prompt and i'll get back to you guys okay so i've executed the uh, the prompts again now let's just go back to cloudwatch logs and refresh once and you'll see that a new log stream has appeared let's open that up and uh, underneath here you'll see a new uh, parameters is mentioned and you'll see that yeah the name uh, username was the parameter name and it was of type string and the value that was passed in was lennox so in this way our uh, agents will be able to get any type of data from the chat it will be able to pass it into the lambda functions and in our lambda functions uh, like under the parameters key which is present in our event dictionary we will be able to get it perform any action so in a more advanced use case it would be like let's say you have a ticketing system and you want an agent ai approach for this what you would do is you would configure the action group with all of the parameters required so the the date hotel name the number of people who are staying so you can mention all of them as required uh, columns the agent will be able to prompt the user to ask for each of those details finally it can uh, execute the api in the background right so the um, lambda function will have the api code to either book the ticket or cancel a ticket or, or whatever it is book a room and uh, we can manipulate the data store the data in a database and so this is how you give your agents access to tools to like dynamic tools and in the, in this way you make your agents not only uh, smart but also useful in a way that you can automate actions perform external uh, you know interact with external services and much more so that's it for this video uh, in the next video i guess i uh, there is one important concept called uh, mcp in in llm so i think i'll also explain that in the next video go through that so that you can you know have an understanding on how to enhance your uh, agentic ai solutions with the uh, newest technology and services as well so yeah that's it for this video so thank you so much for watching uh, i would really appreciate it if you like comment and subscribe and leave your comments like down below on what you would like to see next what i need to improve on and if you have any doubts i'll be like more than happy to answer them for you guys so that's it see you in the next video bye bye